Greetings all, Ferrari Man 601 here. Welcome back to Cold Waters and welcome aboard the USS Oscar Austin. DGG 79 is an early Burke class destroyer currently in the South China Sea. What are we doing here? Well, we are trying to keep tabs on number one, the DPRK, because for whatever reason, the United States foreign policy still says that they have no right to exist, even though they absolutely do. Not endorsing their policies, but they are a sovereign state and they deserve the respect of a sovereign state. However, um, perhaps we're also dealing with some Chinese assets in the area. So an Arleigh Burke class destroyer is the bread and butter of the modern day US Navy. Of course, not at all comparable to the absolutely glorious Iowa class battleships that we've been featuring lately. However, it is what we've got. They've got some missiles, they've got some, I believe five inch guns, and uh, well, maybe they're able to have some offensive capabilities. Our tactical map has a contact here, Sierra 1. Do we have any sort of intel on what this contact is? We do not at this point. Let's turn the ship on. The radar mast. See if we have any more information about that contact. Nothing else at this point. We can Com, Flyco, aircraft ready to launch. get a helicopter off and see what we can do with that. Perhaps we'll be able to get them over to the area where this target is and see if we can get any more intel about it. In the meantime, we are going to send some commands down to the engines and make turns for 34 knots. Set a course Go for that two, last contact. Three, three, Helm, see what we can do. The good thing about these destroyers is they are very maneuverable. They change speed quickly. They can change course quickly. The Iowas, of course, being in their 80 specification, about 58,000 tons or so. They're a little bit more lumbering. These things are very maneuverable. Unfortunately, though, we don't have the sort of firepower that we have been accustomed to using with the Iowas. Therefore, we have to be a little bit more discerning and judicious with how we're going to be dispensing the firepower that we do have. That's going to include things like these RUM-139 missile Got torpedoes. In other words, what we're able to do with these is we launch them, they're missiles, they launch out of torpedo tubes, they fly up under rocket propulsion, and then they come down under parachute, and then a torpedo warhead goes out and engages it more or less like a traditional submarine launch torpedo, for example. We have also got surface-to-air missiles in other vertical launch tubes, which are built into the deck, as you can see here, as well as a couple flanking the superstructure. But for the most part, this is a very different kind of ship. This is meant for a very, a very much more strategic and discerning method of engagement, if it is necessary. In terms of what we have, though, this Sierra One contact, we have basically lost contact with it. Its last known bearing was that 335 don't have any more information about any further contacts in the area at this time. They are at a range, last seen, about 35 to 40 kilometers. And we'll just have to see if they come back into view on our radar scopes, if not visually. Not likely to get a visual at these distances today, given the sea state and the rain, but who knows.
I'll say the design, aesthetically at least, of the early bird class, not too bad. Not too bad at all. The mast up there kind of looks like it was added as an afterthought, but regardless, that's a changeable loadout depending on what the mission is, and as technology, of course, changes. This particular ship was ordered in 1994, laid down in 1997, and launched in 1998, finally commissioned in 2000, remains in active service today, 22 years later. But uh, like a lot of its predecessors, uh, the Arleigh Burke class has had a long life already and most likely will continue to have a quite long life given the Navy's proclivity to throw an awful lot of money at things like littoral combat ships only to decommission them after a couple of years because they're built wrong. Our Seahawk is still out there going to the area of the last known bearing of the CR-1 contact. Still no more information at this time. Con sonar, switching to active search. Okay, we've got a missile launch. Con sonar, switching to passive <laughs> From the general vicinity of Sierra 1, we're going to turn on our countermeasure missiles there. See if we can intercept this thing as it is coming in with a quickness. First to our helicopter. Will the helicopter survive is the question. Don't really know. Whatever's out there is continuing to launch missiles. Send out one of these RAM-156As into that general area. Let's see what we've got. I think they're trying to shoot down our helicopter. Con, Lyco, aircraft returning to base. Let's just bring him back. Not worth it. Fire VLS. Con, Lyco, aircraft knocked out. Yep. And ignore that little error message there. We did get our helicopter shot down. Con, we have another one. This particular spec of the Arleigh Burks does have a hangar, quite obviously. Can support two helicopters. Fire VLS. Let's see what we've got out here in terms of our missiles. Can we see anything? No. See any sign of a ship in the area? Did he launch chaff? Did he send any countermeasures out? Did not. Our other missile. Showing a fire out there. Is that a target? Or is that just some sort of incidental graphical glitch? I don't know. Okay, um, that last launch there was an automated launch of our countermeasure systems. Fire VLS. Con sonar, launch transmit. We got two ships out there, I would think. Fire VLS. Con sonar, launch transient from. All right, so we have a mix of vertical launch tubes going Con off that I am commanding, from. as well as automated ones in our countermeasures countermeasure systems. Um, I'm going to deactivate the countermeasures for now. Con sonar, launch transient from. Fire VLS. Con sonar, launch transient from. We only have 21 of those RM66MS or M5 missiles, so we're going to hold off on using them as long as we can. VLS. 
And remember that these guys did take out our helicopters, so they are obviously being aggressive. The missiles that they're launching, they don't appear to be making it very far. Some of them may well be countermeasures to the missiles that we have sent their way, although there are a couple that are slowly approaching us. Con sonar, launch trans in from. All right, we can start to launch our SAMs again as countermeasures. Sierra One. All right. So this is Sierra One, whatever it is. Fire VLS. Send more Fire missiles out VLS. his direction. Got a missile at uh, 9.1 kilometers. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. Sierra One not really reacting to any of the missiles going his way. A couple are being shot down by his countermeasures. We do have a missile inbound closing. Get chaff going. All right, see where this is going. Chaff going. All right, chaff diverted him. All right, looks like we shot him down. Okay. Got another one that is circling off to our starboard. Got another one that is approaching. All right, we've diverted him again, and we've shot him down. Good. Okay. Master one... Still don't know what type of ship he is, but he is a surface ship. Fire VLS. And we're going to continue to try and engage here with our vertical launch tubes. Fire VLS. He is 25.6 kilometers out. Too far for our five inch main guns. Let's see, here we go. We've got a visual on him. He is Chinese. All right, some of our missiles are going down in the vicinity. He's got a helicopter on the Fantel. He could send that out if he wants one of our missiles going down nearby. Let's send out one of those Talums. See what he could do with that. Fire VLS. What's interesting to me is that he is not trying to counter our launches anymore. RUM-139, send one of those out if possible. Are we in range? Uh, yep, just barely. Fire VLS. Send out a couple of them, see what they do. Alright. He has got countermeasures going again. Is he going to manage to take out our missiles? Nope, not with that one. Con 
Force trans in from. Really throwing everything he's got at this thing. So far, they're not working. And the closer hours get, the less effective his countermeasures are going to become. Fire VLS. Let's see. I think we had an explosion there. He's got chaff going. On sonar. Launch trans in from. Does he have Sea Whiz? All right, got an explosion just ahead of him. I don't know if he has Sea Whiz or not. He must have something. One of ours just flew overhead, I think. Con sonar, launch trans in from. Well, it looks like one of his countermeasures is confused. Fire VLS. Right. Regardless, we are still in good shape. Fire VLS. Con sonar. Launch trans in from. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. Fire VLS. Con sonar. Launch trans in from. Sending out some of those Rem 66 M5s. Fire VLS. Con sonar. Launch trans in from. He's starting to engage with his main guns now. He's launching chaff. One of ours coming in close. Not close enough, unfortunately. We are 19.3 clicks out. Can we engage with our main gun? Yes, we can. Let's start that. His shot starting to land close by. All right. Now we're firing. It's going bow on like we are. It's going to be more difficult for gunnery. Not trying to counter our missiles yet. Let's see. Can we get lucky with anything? Nope. Some of our shots landing close. Some of our missiles are landing close. Real close in that case. He's mostly stopped. Do we have any hits to him? Can we see anything visually here below the waterline? Maybe a little bit on the starboard bow, but could just be shadows. Our missiles are landing well short. Definitely trying to take evasive action here. Engaging with his main gun again. Meanwhile, here we are. He has not landed any hits on us so far. Fire VLS. 
And he's not trying to counter our missile launches anymore, which is very interesting. All right. Still able to launch countermeasures, maybe, but it doesn't appear that he wants to so much. Maybe he's running low. Missiles on the way. He's launching chaff. He's obviously concerned about what we've got. Alright, there's his Sea Whiz going. Contact. That's not what I wanted to see. We got a hit. We have got a hit. I think that was a gun hit. Not a particularly bad one, but we did get one. Control has been damaged. We take a hit. Yep, we have taken uh, probably a gun hit. We have got some sort of issue here. All right, we worked through it. Sorry about that. Still trying to figure out exactly how dot mod works. Any rate, what do we have here? Ninety-four percent hull integrity.
be shooting him down still. Well, we have each got one hit, it would appear. Get a second hit with the guns, looks like it. Got a third hit with the guns. The reactor is flooding in the torpedo room. We got flooding going on here. Yep. Damage control parties, late of the reactor space. Alright, we have got an issue here with the engines. We have no engine power at this time. He is in worse shape though, he's on fire. He's been hit again. He's got two active fires going on. I can actually see us out there. We have no power at this point. Right, reactor's back up. We're a diesel ship, but, you know, audio files in the can. We're hit again. Well, we've hit him again. That's good. All right, he is down. He is down. He is down. All right, we have taken him out. He is going down. Fifty-two percent hull integrity. Now, Master Two, Master Two is this little torpedo boat. He's going to be significantly harder to engage. Can we engage him with the guns? Yeah, we're going to try. Con's helm, steady course. Let's see what we can do. He's hit. He is already hit. This might be easier than I think. He's getting swamped by some of these heavy seas as well. He's got some significant damage above and below the waterline. got a healthy ship again, and he does not have a healthy ship right now.
He might not be able to recover from this. He's actually in a fair bit of trouble just by being out in this kind of weather. Because he is not at all built for these sorts of conditions. But he apparently has Sea Whiz, which is interesting to me. Interesting. That fire appears to be getting worse. It's only 17 and a half kilometers away. These are Talon missiles, which of course are not going to do very much. Shoot two one, aye, sir. Doubt these torpedoes are going to do very much either. In the reactor space. We just torpedoed ourselves, didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay. Damage control parties, lay into the engine room. Con helm, of course. Well, don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, friendly fire. Oh, integrity is now 24%. That is not what we needed. Not in the least. We just gotta hope that we can take him out with the gun. Missile came down closer than I thought it might. Alright, we've got another gun hit. Alright, he is down. He has been taken out. Very good. Very, very good. Yep, all three of his shafts are stopped, and he has got sick and significant damage above and below the waterline. Completely involved in a fire, and well, he is going down. The rest of the map looks clear. We're gonna make a beeline for the nearest coast because we are in some serious trouble. Master one contact is on the bottom. Master two contact is making his way to the bottom. Joyous day. Meanwhile, we have got a gigantic hole in our port side. Hopefully our damage control efforts can control that. But we have survived. The Arleigh Burke class destroyer. Not the most inspiring warship I've ever seen, but apparently it can do the job. If not with its missiles, then with the five inch gun, which is its only ballistics armament. Not bad. Not great. 
Is it anything that I would solely equip the largest navy on the planet with? No, absolutely not. We need some heavier firepower at sea, as far as I'm concerned. But it is what it is, and it was sufficient against these particular bogey ships. Although <laughs> it's a little bit closer than it should have been in terms of the overall parity of armament. Con, torpedo room, tube one ready. All right, yes. No more contacts, no more inbound weapon systems. We are good. At any rate, though, yeah, with 24% hull integrity remaining, that is what we've got. The USS Oscar Austin survives just 